Okay, hello. Hello, thank you very much, uh, Ian. Uh, okay, uh, I was asked to introduce myself. Uh, uh, well, I gave uh, already a short summary of who, who I am, but uh, mostly what uh, brought me to this topic that I'm going to present is that I have been working for uh, over 10 years as one of uh, Debian's uh, keyring maintainers. And the world that, that has got me uh, quite involved into trying to understand uh, the, what happens, how it develops uh, the, the, the PGP status uh, in many free software pro uh, projects that use it uh, as a basis for, uh, for say, membership uh, uh, and identity validation. Uh, I am also, well, uh, I live in Mexico City. I started last year doing a PhD. Uh, my co-author here, Jorge Luis Ortega, is my, uh, my advisor. And uh, well, this is the topic I am preparing for this work. So, well, first of all, please do not uh, ex expect this to be uh, like uh, all thought out. We are uh, basically just starting, but I wanted to share the, uh, the, the problems the Open PGP key server network ecosystem is, is having currently and share some ideas on how we, we, we plan to, to uh, address the, uh, these issues. So, well, the network was uh, happy and simple in the beginning, uh, but well, you can see this is uh, quite far from our reality, right? Uh, the internet starting as a very trusting network. Most of the protocols we use still exhibit that they, they were not meant uh, to, uh, to all the time uh, be defensive, be thinking about a, an, an adversary. Uh, many things are built on trust and well, that reality has changed. Right. Of course, you are more than familiar with most of the uh, terms I'm showing here. Internet is not uh, a happy and a trustable place anymore, if it ever was. So, well, many people are happy and, and think that's uh, enough to be uh, to say we, we are past the, uh, that, that uh, uh, the, those issues. But, uh, we, are, we are happy that uh, cryptography, cryptography has been widely adopted throughout the network. Uh, most network connections, by uh, uh, I think it was like 80% of network connections are uh, nowadays encrypted. And well, if you see uh, the HTTPS, you may, you may trust a bit of uh, what's going on, but what does it really mean to have the network, uh, the network connections encrypted? Or not only network connections, uh, messages uh, stored and all that. Uh, let, let's think a bit more into this. In Spanish, particularly in Mexico, we have a saying that hay uh, pájaros en el alambre. There are birds on the wire, right? When you have a telephone wire as the one depicted here, and there are birds on it, it's like uh, they can listen to your conversations. Well, the network uh, cryptography we use uh, as a layer, as the S in HTTPS, it does prevent against eavesdropping uh, to a certain degree against, uh, uh, but, but let's get to that uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, with this, we get, yes, strong cryptography that uh, no uh, nation state uh, resources can break in a reasonable time frame. We, we do have lots, uh, well, uh, several algorithms that have been uh, presented to public, uh, studied and approved by groups of uh, scientists, by cryptographers, so we can trust that cryptography to be real, uh, and uh, one of the most important things is that uh, existing network protocols didn't have to be reinvented. Email, uh, web, uh, 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 ha uh, they are layered, there's an encryption layer uh, over which the same connection goes through. Uh, so uh, it's easy to encrypt the uh, uh, pre-existing uh, communication channels. We also do encrypt, uh, for example, files for local storage. So in case somebody grabs my laptop, they will not get access to my most private files. But this encryption doesn't ensure all, all, all of the properties we would like to. For example, it doesn't hide the fact that there's communication occurring between two participants. So uh, uh, people monitoring our communications will still uh, get that A is talking with B 
and they can establish uh, many patterns based only on metadata analysis. And what's uh, particularly of his interest right now is that uh, uh, people don't uh, expect, don't understand always that an important part of uh, cryptography is the verification of the correct identity. It's ensuring that uh, if I wanted to talk with A, I am talking to A and not with somebody who pretends to be A or somebody relying uh, uh, messages to A, right? So, well, one of the tools uh, uh, we have had for a very long time, for over 30 years already, is PGP. PGP uh, uh, started as a medium for encrypting email and uh, files st stored locally, but has grown very much past uh, what it was originally planned. However, of course, it does show its age. So, uh, what do we use for identity verification? How can we use cryptography to ensure identity? What does it mean to verify an identity? Uh, uh, I like uh, pictures like uh, the previous one and this one because uh, we, we take for granted the fingerprint as a, as a proof of, uh, of identity, but is my digital fingerprint something like this? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, signing something cryptographically goes even way beyond wh what I could do even with an uh, autonomous, uh, uh, like uh, uh, on paper signature. Uh, the, the signature carries my identity, uh, uh, like carries uh, a proof of identity, but uh, changes uh, also due to, uh, with each bit, with each byte uh, represented in a document. Now, I want to interact with a specific person. Of course, if I want to uh, interact uh, using cryptography with my closest peers, well, I can get their identity and I can uh, assure that. But this, uh, uh, the internet is too big. Even the people that are following this talk right now, we are part of the same movement. I know many people working in, uh, on free software throughout the world. I've been part of this community for 20 years, but most of you have never met. What if uh, out of the, the comments we will have at the end of the session, we want to exchange information privately? How can I trust you are the same person that talked here? Well, I don't trust you because I've never met you, but I have to trust somebody. So maybe I trust a friend who trusts a friend who trusts you, right? We can uh, make a path of identities we are willing to trust. There are two ways of, uh, uh, of allowing a transitive trust to be uh, presented. One is uh, the centralized trust uh, uh, mechanism. So if this guy wants to ensure that I have the right to enter this building, they will uh, get my government uh, official issued ID. And this has several uh, bits that they can check that is very hard or should be very hard to forge. Right? So there's centralized trust because uh, if, if this person trusts my voting, uh, my voting card, which is our like uh, national ID, well, he's trusting a central, uh, a, a central player. What about distributed trust? Well, we are a group of people and we have a personal knowledge of some of us between each other. So uh, that's closer to the model of a, a distributing trust, distributing over the set of uh, participants of the network. Right. Uh, most of the internet uh, encrypted connections follow this model. The, a public a key cryptography central a, a certification authorities, where we have ultimate ro routes of trust that are defined by your operating system or by your a browser a vendor or, or authors or whatever. And each of those routes of trust a, validates a set of certification authorities. While I am more interested in distributed mechanisms a, where the center is made on each of the users of the system. So every user can uh, pr present certifications for each of the other uh, users uh, uh, of this network. 
following their own policies. What does it mean that I trust your identity? Well, it will be different for each person, right? But out of these trust relations, we will get a global uh, woven web of trust. So we could picture it like this, right? A user can either go to, uh, to a trust anchor, to an ultimate trust anchor, go to a certification authority, and then to the destination sites. Or they can navigate a web of trust and say that B wants to communicate with K. Uh, well, B will find different uh, trust paths via people they know, and, and people not, they don't know directly. But uh, uh, say B will find that, I, that A says that B says that K has this key, and that's a, a transitive tr trust model, right? Now, this is not very easy to do. This requires a lot of people, a lot of people to know each other. Why? Because we're not talking about a network with, say, two, four, well, with a dozen nodes or so. We are talking about uh, a large groups of people. Nowadays, the key server network carries around six million identities, which is a lot. So having a, a network uh, well, well enough connected for B to trust that they will get to K in a, in a reasonable number of hops, it requires many people to trust each other. So I, 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 uh, I suppose many of you have been to key signing parties such as the one pictured here in Fosdem, right? What do you see here? Here you will see people with tiny slips of paper in their mouths, checking identity cards, verifying this against a huge list of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, cryptographic unreadable network IDs. But well, we find like-minded people in free software conferences, we verify each other, we check uh, that the, the papers really look uh, genuine, we really pay attention to details, right? Hey, back. Sorry. And we certify each other. The network trust, sorry, the network trust increases. However, these kind of uh, key signing parties, uh, I last, uh, I stopped participating in them uh, when they reached more than 300 people. It was unbearable to do because we, we had so many people at the beginning, we were very thorough, checking the, really the identity documents from each other. But after checking a hundred identity documents, we just go on automatic. We stop paying attention, and that's very uh, dangerous. Uh, 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 one guy once made an experiment of, uh, of uh, uh, after a, a couple of dozens people uh, checked his uh, identity, he slipped in a fake ID. And many people still accepted it until somebody cried uh, uh, that there was something foul there, right? So uh, let's be careful when we think about uh, key signing parties. But well, anyway, we certify many people against many people and we build uh, webs of trust. Now, how do we get uh, the, the whole network distributed, right? Uh, if we go back, a couple of slides here. Here you see that I, I have a graph for the, the whole network. I can the path from B to K because I have a, a, the whole map. Now, if, if I have 300 people uh, uh, cross-signing from a set of, of 6 million people, how do I get the, 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 the whole paths that are being crossed? We need a key distribution infrastructure. Uh, for TLS, for uh, the centralized uh, model, keys and certificate are sent each time a session is established. That's the reason your browser will check each of the provider's uh, identities and will give you a closed lock or a, a, an open lock. Or an, a, at some point in time, gave you a blue bar or a green bar or a white bar. Yeah, everything is done at, at session establishment time because they are few ultimate uh, sources of truth, of uh, trust. But in a distributed setting, it's much uh, more difficult. 
So uh, in order to have a central location where uh, all identities can be fetched, a, 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 a key servers were, were brought, uh, were, were established, where everybody can upload their identities and check for who signs which identities. Mm -hmm. uh, under OpenPGP, we must first get the identity of the, other, or the counterpart and then create our encrypted message and then send it. Why? Because OpenPGP is meant for a synchronous oper uh, operation. I prepare my encrypted message here and then send it. I do not have a, a, a real-time contact with the other server. Right? So these kind of servers were uh, called PKS key servers, uh, and they, they work more or less as telephone directories for cryptographic uh, keys. Now, I told you I don't like centralization. We are trying to uh, uh, keep possible the uh, having a, a a, a decentralized operation throughout uh, the, uh, the system. So how can this be decentralized? Well, this network is not a network of signatures. This is a network of servers. This is a network of servers who ex which exchange uh, uh, the keys that are uploaded to them. And they do that using what's called a gossip protocol or, a, or an epidemic protocol. It, those servers connect to each other and reconcile large sets of, uh, of uh, key information. So what we get, hmm, this worked for many years. This worked for almost 20 years. Now, nowadays, it doesn't seem to work that much. Think about this. The, the set of keys exchange between the servers is a binary, non-modifiable, distributed, non-authenticated, eventually consistent, uh, consistent storage. Many people will say, well, this sounds more or less like what is promised to, to work on a blockchain. Uh, well, yes, there are some uh, implementations that are blockchain-like. But the basic thing here is that uh, anybody can commit binary data to, the, to this uh, large a set of, uh, of data. It is not authenticated uh, and uh, it spreads to many servers and it's basically impossible to remove anything from there ever again. So maybe, I mean, th there have been attacks uh, throughout history, but maybe uh, six, eight, ten years ago, we started seeing different attacks on the model. I'm not going to go through all of them uh, uh, again, but uh, on, on, I will only detail the main one. That's uh, what we call a, a poison certificates. What is certificate poisoning? Well, people are usually connected via uh, a not very large number of links. Say, maybe I am just connected to one person who is part of the uh, of the key server network. I only know one person and we cross uh, signed our identities. Or many people will be more connected like this one that's connected to uh, uh, five different uh, people in the in the queuing. Some people are very, very uh, much connected. Say uh, this, well, this is a, a, I'm taking for a snapshot from a Debian key signing party. And well, yeah, this is a, a, our Debian project leader who, who is very well connected. I happen to be very close here with a previous key that I had. Uh, uh, something happened to my hardware, so I'm not that much connected anymore. But well, normal people, even very, very uh, closely connected individuals, may have hundreds of cert certifications. Maybe 300 people have vouched have certificated my identity. Now, what would happen if I got a, uh, an, an attacker, an, uh, a system user who doesn't want to abide by, by the rules and wants to create problems? Well, nothing stops uh, Mallory uh, fr uh, from creating tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of throwaway identities. Throwaway because those identities are worth nothing. 
uh, the only uh, value for all those keys is the number of keys. They are garbage keys, and they they, they are uh, they are not linked to Mallory's identity. I, it's just a, I'm illustrating that Mallory created all those keys, but they are not linked to to their identity. And Mallory wants to attack a victim called Vicky. So with 100,000 keys, Mallory signs Vicky's key. Uh, as, uh, as it happens, this is entirely possible, in, and it has happened several times. So Vicky is forced to abandon her key. Why? Because uh, nobody will be able to work with a key that large in, uh, anymore. Uh, Vicky can create a new key, but uh, getting it uh, signed again, getting it back to the uh, to, to the uh, trust network will take her effort, will take her time, will take her visiting people, which was, was very hard during pandem pandemic, right? And it opens a window for ID supplantation or ID theft, where Mallory can do other tricks and trick people into believing that she has a, a Vicky's key. Now, what happens if Alice wants to communicate with Vicky and doesn't have her a her key already, uh, Alice will search in the key server network and will find a very, very, very large uh, uh, key that's more or less a thousand times larger than, uh, than most keys. That will create a denial of service uh, on, uh, on her GNUPG or whatever program she's using for communication, and maybe even will corrupt her own trust database in her system. So certificate poisoning is more or less like this, uh, an overloaded truck. And it's, it's a, a situation very, very hard to come out from. So, well, why is it so hard? How, how come we cannot delete those certificates? I haven't explained the, many of the details here, but the, the problem is that the way the SKS key server network synchronizes was built to make censorship basically impossible. So if I have put uh, information in the network and it has been mirrored to several servers, it's basically a, 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 a engraved in stone. I cannot remove the information that's already there. And well, adding to this, yeah, I, I have talked about one of the, uh, the attacks on, uh, on this protocol. Uh, there's a, another important challenge in the form of the uh, GDPR, the, the very important and very positive European regulation for privacy. It brings the right to be forgotten. So if I don't want to be associated with a given uh, cryptographic identity anymore, I can ask whoever is disseminating it to stop doing so. Uh, I can uh, uh, send out information uh, deletion orders for anything linked to my person. However, uh, in our network, in the PGP network, it is impossible to remove that information. So this has a uh, cost uh, many, uh, many key servers to simply stop providing their services because they cannot answer to, to GDPR deletion orders. And well, the outlook is bleak. Yeah. This was a network three years ago. You can see it was never a very big key server network, but there were many servers. There's strong internal connectivity. And this is the network at the beginning of this month. Uh, uh, if you see only one edge, it doesn't mean the, the information doesn't flow, flow directionally. Having one edge is enough for synchronization. Uh, they just show which server connects to which server. And, uh, and it's not a, a stable uh, snapshot. I mean, I can take the same snapshot three times during the day, even uh, minutes afterwards, and it may be very different. But you can see the number of nodes has uh, shrunk, and the internal connectivity has also reduced. This is I, I like this uh, uh, noisy di uh, noisy di uh, diagram. Uh, this shows that 
at the beginning of this uh, uh, data gathering I've uh, been doing, we have, uh, this is not number of nodes, but it's the number of successful connections. Please bear with me for choosing a wrong representation, but it maps to it. We have around 450 with a lot of variance, uh, stable for a long time. And after the, the attacks uh, of uh, uh, poison certificates started, this sharply dropped. Here we, we reach a minimum, but it st seems uh, we stabilized, stabilized uh, around 100. Okay, with ups and downs, it seems to go up. And then here, the key server network, uh, the, the operators of uh, SKS key servers, which has a pool of servers, decided to stop uh, the pool from operating and re retired the domain name. And we have a second drop here, right? And nowadays, this is a situation uh, where we are having, well, more or less 80 uh, stable uh, uh, connections uh, uh, we, we can establish day to day. So where, must, uh, where do I stand with this? We are still far. Uh, I, as I told you, I, I just uh, we are st uh, starting uh, one, one month past the start of the third semester of a four-year project. So I still feel we are very much at the start and they don't have much to show. I, right now, I, I'm just trying to communicate the issues of the key server network. There are several projects addressing similar concerns with different, uh, uh, different strategies and different priorities. Uh, Sequoia uh, is re-implementing most of the PGP uh, uh, tool chain, or, yeah, uh, and they have a Hagrid key server, uh, but Hagrid doesn't keep the, uh, uh, the decentralization part as, as so important. And they drop part of the, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they, they, they do not uh, see the, uh, the web of trust as uh, such an important part of the model, which uh, we, we do. Hockey Puck aims to replace SKS. Uh, presents uh, something most similar to what we, we were operating and many of the SKS key servers have migrated over to HockeyPuck. It's a clean re-implementation, uh, much easier to work with, uh, 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 but it doesn't solve the certificate poisoning yet. Conix is a completely different system aimed at key transparency, aimed at uh, no provi uh, provider being able to uh, switch the, the key they are uh, offering for somebody. And there are many, many other uh, uh, ideas, which are what I would term in, in academic state, because I have seen very small implementations, but nothing still uh, large scale. The largest one I've seen, I think, that is different to SKS is uh, Sequoia, uh, uh, the, uh, based on Hagrid key server, a uh, proposal to uh, to use a, a, a certify a validating a key server where I have to identify myself via a mail exchange. <clears throat> so what what we are trying to do is to uh, present a solution that keeps a distributed or maybe more formally decentralized model viable without requiring centralizing entities at all. What we want to do is a, a protocol that pre prevents certificate poisoning without uh, compromising what we feel to be very important and positive in the web of trust. So the, the uh, strategy we're following is called first party attested third party certification protocol. This basically means uh, enforcing what's long been a best practice. If I am going to sing, sign your key, it will not be me who uploads that signature to a key server. I will send it back to you by mail, and you will, uh, will certify that my signature on your key is correct, and you will upload your key with my signature to the key servers. Again, this has been recommended as a best practice, but it, it has never been mandated or, uh, or enforced. Uh, what about information removal? Well, this is a very, very important uh, issue. But uh, 
I've been talking about this with my advisor. He says that, that would make the scope of the project maybe beyond uh, what's achievable for for our work. So I I will keep like an eye on being able to specify information removal. I think it's very important to to cover, but we're not uh, yet uh, contemplating it. The expected outcome for this uh, will be to, well, simple, to keep things working, to keep having to allow a, a decentralized public key server network to keep operating, mitigating the effect that those attacks uh, I, I, I explained have had on it, and uh, allowing it to continue with modern exp expectations of privacy. Uh, we also want to keep the web of trust decentralized transitive trust model relevant and sustainable for open PGP communications. This is mostly because many projects, many free software projects and, and other natures of projects as well, uh, depend on, on something like open PGP, on something like the web of trust for many core uh, decisions and the uh, and membership situations. So we, I feel it's very important to work on this and not lose the, the those uh, uh, bits of the uh, those uh, like the like characteristics of the model. So that's what I have as a presentation. Uh, I hope we have uh, time and interest for some questions and answers. Of course, if you want to, to talk to me at any uh, other time, you can also mail me. So, uh, please, if there's something. And uh, can you hear me? Is my microphone working now? Very good. We do have a question from the channel. Uh, everyone loves your slides, and everyone is very curious about what software you're using to uh, present them today. Oh, OK. Well, the slides are pre prepared with a, a latex beamer. And I'm uh, using Impressive as a, as a presentation tool. It's uh, written in Python. Um, I have a question for me, though. So I like the protocol adjustments you're proposing, but what prevents a sock puppet, people creating their own sock puppet universe to verify themselves and then upload stuff? Of course. Well, uh, this will not prevent sock puppets from existing. You can create as many identities as, as you want uh, uh, in the view I have, uh, but you will not be able to pollute my key. Because if you send me 10,000 uh, uh, requests for a key certification on my key, I will reject them. And I will not push those certifications back to the server. So you can create as many identities as, as you want, as you have been able to create for the last 30 years but they will not be able to harm other people. Looking through the questions here. So a while back, there was a problem with the 32-bit aliasing of all fingerprints. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how this addresses that, but what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, this was mostly a uh, uh, issue about the, the interface. Uh, OpenPGP uh, uses 160-bit hashes, but for humans to, to use them, we usually memorized only a little bit of this. So something like this part, yeah. I used to give people, say, this part, uh, those final 32 bits of my key. And I still remember many 32-bit uh, uh, snippets of my uh, previous keys. But what happens? Of course, there will be collisions. So once a, a, a computing power advanced enough, a, it was very easy to set up a GPU farm to create enough certificates to just uh, enough keys to collide uh, with all of them. And once the collisions were made, yes, to certify one another. The answer for this was, to abandon 32-bit uh, short UIDs. Nowadays, the usual uh, standard is using what's called long key IDs, that's 64-bit. But 64-bit keys are not memorable. People will never remember them. So uh, their recommendation is to stop uh, using, uh, uh, well, shorter key IDs and uh, just to, to 
to exchange the full 160 bit uh, 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 hash. Of course, that's not memorable, and that's something that computer can help you. I, I remember there was a, I think it was monkey, monkey sign. There was a, a project that, a, a, say, for key signing parties, they printed like a name tags that had a QR uh, with that information. Something that's better for the human because you will have a photo of the face of your friend next to the QR, and better for the computer because it will not lead to a badly typed, uh, 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 like a typo. So are you familiar with the, I'm sure you are, the SSH visual key fingerprint that they have? Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a way that we might be able to get a, a picture of our fingerprint, so to speak? It, it could be. I mean, uh, I haven't uh, thought much about that part of the problem. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, the, uh, well, I, I saw this uh, monkey sign thing maybe 12 years ago in the DevConf we had in New York. And I haven't seen it promoted uh, further, so I haven't discussed with the, the implementers on, on their merits and the reason for not pushing it anymore. Uh, QR codes are not visually recognizable. The, the idea was to have together the face of the person and uh, op like a, a thing that's opaque to the human, right? If you see, I don't have any here, a QR code, you will not be able to distinguish it by your eyes from another one. But uh, you would have a, a photo that your computer can get part of the information and the, uh, a person can get another. Uh, the, what, yeah, I know what you mean is something very different. Uh, I can recognize the shape uh, the, the, uh, uh, produced by a given SSH key. Uh, and I've seen it also not very much uh, uh, promoted, mainly because, uh, say, uh, the situation was very different 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when us system administrators, I am a system administrator most of my, my time, well, we had maybe three, four, five computers or systems which we cared for. Nowadays, you, with container, containerization, I have a, maybe a hundred and I don't have a large uh, set. So I, I don't remember that much the shape of the SSH keys for each of my machines. We have a fresh question from Dexco. Is it not better for people to just use WKD or Dane, question mark? That proves at least right. that you are in possession of a domain and people are forced to send you a signed public key then. And then there's no GDPR issue. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, WKD and Dane are interesting. They are ways to distribute a, a key certificates based on the domain name they are from. So one is based on the web, one is based on DNS records. It presents a couple of issues, though. Uh, it is tied to the provider of your, uh, uh, say, mail. So if I have uh, an identity, say, gwolf at gwolf.org, that's my uh, main ma uh, mail, or gwolf at debian.org, yeah, Debian publishes that, and I can publish that on uh, on my own domain. Uh, but uh, what if uh, my main mail were to be uh, gunnar.wolf at gmail.com? Can I make Gmail host my public key at a well-known address? No. So it, it, not only that is tied to a, a centralized model where each uh, mail server centralizes their users' Uh, identities, uh, but but also uh, excludes a large group of the population who will never be able to use WKD or Dane. Okay, I've got a, a long question here, but it looks like it's a good one. It's from uh, Velodin, the maintainer of keys.openpg.org. As you might know, we don't distribute third-party signatures because of spam issues. We've been thinking about solutions for this, and obviously they all have trade-offs versus the everything goes model. At the moment, GNU PG also filters out third-party signatures when retrieving keys from key servers by default, leaving the echo system pretty stuck. I wonder what's your take on a way forward there? Well, I, I think that, I, I mean, 
again, I haven't implemented. I still have a lot to, uh, to read, to learn, a lot of wall, walls against which to bang my head. But I think that if signatures are only accepted uh, by key servers when they are attested, when they are verified by the first party, the, that is by the, the person whose key is being modified or certified, that will also, I, I mean, maybe I will get a lot of spam. Many, maybe many people will try to sign my key, but it will not propagate to others. It will not uh, ever reach the key servers. Only if they are, uh, only if they are signed by, by the affected key, they will be accepted. Okay. And then this would make this the last question because I think there'll be the time. Would it be possible to fix the scale issue by running many small scale servers? For instance, Debian developers would have their keys on a Debian server and people on other servers would somehow trust the Debian key server. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's, I think it's very important to have many small servers, but uh, each of the servers, I mean, I would like to keep the situation where each of the servers has the full network. It is not so uh, large, it's something that's doable. And uh, I, I, I don't know if I didn't uh, understand or didn't get some of the, the question, but uh, I, uh, the, the burden uh, that each of the servers carries by each additional key is uh, negligible. Uh, uh, so please, if I didn't understand your question, please write to me and we will talk uh, more at length about it. Okay, well, very good. And unless I misunderstand the time, I I think uh, that concludes the talk. It was an excellent talk. Thank you very much. And it was a fascinating one for me. It was one I was really looking forward to. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here.